For the first time in 25 years, rural spending is growing faster than urban consumption, perhaps highlighting that Bharat is catching up with India. So will the rural growth provide the big boost for the country's growth in the years to come? But with basic amenities like education, electricity, healthcare still lacking, will it take a long time for the face of rural India? to change dramatically. That's the big debate on We Mean Business today. I'm Shweta Rajpal Kohli. Joining me on the show, Dr. David M. Dror, founding chairman of the Microinsurance Academy. He joins us here in the Delhi studio. Also, Sunil Alag, independent uh, business consultant, joins us from Kolkata. Mr. Amitabh Mal, partner and director of BCG, joins us from Mumbai. Also from Mumbai, Pankaj Gupta, practice head uh, of consumer and retail from the Tata Strategic Management Group. Uh, a Mahindran, MD of GCPL, Godrej Consumer Products Limited, joins us from Mumbai. And also a very special guest, Chavi Rajavat, the Sarpanch or the elected head of the Village Council of Soda, joining us from the Jaipur studio. Let me start the discussion by actually going across to Chavi Rajavat, who is really a case study in, in, in herself, a graduate from Lady Sri Ram College, an MBA from Pune. Chavi actually left her high-flying corporate job and city life to develop rural India. She is a Sarpanch of Soda, as we said, which is a village about 60 kilometers from Jaipur. And uh, she is clearly the first woman Sarpanch of India. Chavi, really heartening to see the kind of work that you've been doing in rural Rajasthan. My question to you to really uh, start the discussion of the day, do you see rural India changing? Clearly, do you feel there's more money in, in the hands of rural people? Uh, frankly speaking, and of course I'm speaking from my observations in my village and the district, I don't think it is really happening. It could happen. There's huge opportunity. There's a lot that can happen, provided our rural areas uh, sought the kind of development that they actually deserve to see. But sadly enough, uh, not enough is happening. The government should be a little more proactive. People from the private sector could venture out to help out in a big way, but none of that really happens. So a lot of villages, including villages such as mine, frankly, cannot really contribute towards the India growth that uh, you here wish to speak about. All right, so that really sets the pace of our discussion today. And let me now go across to someone else who is also doing absolutely pioneering work in India, largely based on that rural growth story that we're here to discuss on the show today. Dr. David M. Dror, who's the chairman and managing director of the Microinsurance Academy. Dr. Dror, your work here in India, largely based on the fact that people in rural India want to buy insurance, want to, to make sure that they are hedging themselves against various risks. Do you really believe in the rural growth story? The, the rural population in India is not an option for the future. It is the majority of the country, and it is not only the majority in terms of number of people, but also in terms of the issues, the growth, the land, the resources, everything. Right. So the heart and soul of India, has been said many a time, is in rural India. Everything else depends on that. Now, the services, particularly social services, essential issues relating to housing, relating to access to health care, relating to water, relating to roads, to electricity, to those things that people absolutely take for granted in very many urban areas are just not developing as they should, as they could in rural India. And to say the government should do more is all good and well. To say that corporate should do more is also good and well. The reality is that no country in the world has ever developed by expecting when 3% of the taxable revenue is taxed that governments can create the transfer of income without contributory schemes that reach each and every beneficiary. Right. The contribution may be small, 
but it can't be zero. You can't build a solution for rural India on the assumption that everything has to be from the government kitty when most people don't necessarily pay on all their assets and the transfer of that asset, of that redistribution is so imperfect. All right, let me take that thought forward and go across to Mr. Sunil Alak because Mr. Alak, the government is often criticized uh, for pursuing policies, growth policies particularly, that are not inclusive. And here, we'd like to talk about uh, what's been happening in the last few years. Do you believe that welfare schemes like uh, uh, the Narega scheme has really changed the face of rural India for the better? You know, I, from the point of view of the consumer industry, and I have, I have heard the other two speakers and I tend to agree with them partially, but what is happening is that most of us have seen growth in consumption of products uh, in the rural areas. Let's try and define rural area first. I mean, there's about 500 million people in India which unfortunately do not matter to manufacturers because they don't even have enough money to get their daily food or whatever. So they cannot afford a packaged product. So ultimately, from the manufacturer's point of view, from the industry point of view, you have maybe about six, seven hundred million, of which you can say two or three hundred million are in the urban areas. And that leaves another three or four hundred million on whom they concentrate. And they are the ones that are leading the consumption story. So if you put everything in perspective of what do we need to do socially for the 500 million that are below the poverty line a lot? What do we do for the people who are 300 or 400 million, which are contributing to the consumption story? The sad part is that Narega is not generating what I would call as real income because it means that you have generated money in the hands of consumers and therefore this cannot last unless you give them real jobs. And they don't have real jobs at the moment. So it's like the government taking the money, giving it to them and saying, please spend on soaps and jeans and belts and everything else. And then there's a benefit out here. This will not sustain itself unless we have a policy that actually makes it inclusive. And I think the points that are being made by the earlier two speakers need to be kept in mind. From the industry point of view, we've had a terrific growth. We've had massive growth coming in because the urban consumer let me tell you, it's not that he doesn't have money. And, uh, and I'd just like to explain a little bit about what I have built up, what I call the LSD model for my clients. And all products are now becoming what I call luxury, L for luxury, S for stress, and D for daily needs. So if you slot your products and see where the growth is taking place, where are people spending money, it's really in the S zone. I mean, whether he drinks more tea because it relieves stress in the rural area. If you find a lady who buys a lipstick, in a way, it's relieving stress. You have the nano which is being sold, it, it's stress. Lifebuoy soap tells the mother that your child will not fall ill, it relieves stress. So the money that is being spent there is the fact that you have some companies which are doing exceptionally well. But can this be sustained? I really worry about that. All right, we'll talk about uh, whether it can be sustained or not. But Mr. Alag, if you could also, a little bit, you've highlighted very, very in, in a very interesting way the changing consumption patterns. But take that forward for our viewers and tell us how dramatically that has changed, if at all, over the last few years. Like you're saying, the entire consumption basket in rural India has changed, perhaps giving indicators uh, to uh, India Inc. that depends largely on that rural story, that they need to clearly change what they're offering to rural consumers. Again, a sign of, of changing rural India. Okay, now, you know, I'll give you a, a, an example. I was in Tamil Nadu traveling with one of my clients and we were in what I would call semi-rural areas because we didn't go to the very small villages. As I said, from the industrial po industry point of view, they are not as yet into my target group. Now, I spoke to a couple of young people who were in the age group of 18 to 22, both boys and girls, and I said, look, if I gave you 10,000 rupees, what would you spend your money on? And believe you me, I was quite surprised, unless somebody in the panel can predict what the answers were. This, all the younger generation said, the first thing that I'll buy is a mobile phone. Okay, That was the first response, top of mind. Number two, they said they'll buy a TV set. Okay, Now, what does this mean? They want to remain in communication and they want to have some form of entertainment. And I, then the third thing which really shook me was a pair of jeans. 
Now, what has happened is that if you look at these consumers, then I ask them, what about your house? What about your food? I'm sure you're not getting a complete diet. Wouldn't you want to spend? He's saying, I don't mind missing a, a lunch. I don't mind missing a dinner. But these three things are becoming essential. Now, whether it's the right way that India is going forward or the wrong way, I don't want to get into the debate. But companies like there's a Keval Kiran, which makes killer jeans. He's selling his jeans at 900 rupees. These guys are never going to buy Levi's. They're not going to buy the expensive jeans. But they watch their Salman Khan wearing jeans. And then this guy tells me, I don't have to wash my jeans. I can look very trendy because the designs are okay. And that's what they want to spend on. So the aspirational levels have become such that the money is being spent on consumption. They want to buy a better soap. And, you know, uh, I, I can give you one other classic example. And I hope I'm not taking up your time. We took a cooking, uh, uh, a hair oil for, uh, which was meant for hair fall in Maharashtra. And the ladies out there, it, and the, we wanted to price it at 150 rupees. The brand has just got launched by a company called Sapat. And we took a group of ladies and we asked them, will you pay 150 rupees for this oil because it prevents hair fall? And they said, yes, now 150 is premium pricing. Huh? It's not inexpensive or it's not cheap. And then we showed them designs of how the bottle will look. And we had a very premium looking bottle and it was rejected outright by all the women. They said, if I take this bottle home, my father-in-law, mother-in-law, my husband all will think that I'm splurging on myself. And therefore, please give me a bottle that looks very ordinary, looks like a herbal <laughs> bottle. The price Never is mind not the changing. Price. She's buying 150. Yeah, I want to take back and get socially accepted. I'm raising a couple of issues out here that this social acceptance scene in a family is becoming very important in rural areas for consumption stories. What are the youngsters looking for? It's not so much a roof over the house. It's not so much of food. They're willing to skip meals and get what they think is putting them onto the map of the younger generation. And you will not believe it when we went to the dealers where we were going to sell this hair oil and we asked them that you're going to push the in the same market now as the women. And we said, look, we want you to push this oil. We'll give you a, we'll have a prize for the guy who sells the most. And we said, we're going to give a car. So we asked them for three different models. One was, I think, the Scorpio. The other one was the Tata. And the third was the Zylo, which is what is a very urban looking uh, SUV. And we thought since the women don't want to show off, maybe the dealers will not. And they chose the Zylo. And when we asked them, why do you want to buy a Zylo? They said, because if I win a Zylo and I'll drive it, I'll be going ahead of my Sarpanch. I Sarpanch se aage nikal jaunga. So there is an one generation <laughs> wow. which wants to defy authority. And there's another lady at home who still wants to be socially acceptable. And I think there is a complete change in the rural areas. Okay. I mean, I'm talking about the four or 500 million people that I'm talking, uh, that I'm referring to right now. And not the face of rural India is totally line. changing. And you have to, it's changing. And if you don't understand it, your consumption story companies are not going to do well. We're going to sell all the wrong products. We're going to price them wrong. And this euphoria that has come in the last couple of years, you could see a lot of companies, you know, taking a slide if they don't understand what's happening in rural India. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.